Pulitzer. <laughs> Can't go a moment longer without Pulitzer Prize winning science writer and journalist. Ah. Uh, Okay, Lori Garrett is here. Hi, Lori. I know you've been on TV pretty much every Second, <laughs> moment yeah. all weekend, so I, I appreciate you taking time. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. Oh my God. What I what uh, a weekend. I know, like I say, every time I turn on the TV, you were on. But I, there are so many questions, right, about his treatment. About th- this is of such uh, international import, and and it it really is a national security crisis in itself, isn't it? Absolutely. If, if we don't know the status of the president, but he's still making all the decisions and doing so through fog of treatment drugs, side effects, and perhaps feverish delirium, um, the nation is not well served and the world is not well served. Lori, talk about that a little bit, because we've, we've been saying that, that many people that have been on specifically this steroid, um, it, and by the way, you said steroids like this, dexamethasone, right, stifle the immune system, so it's usually considered dangerous to use them in an early stage COVID. Again, we have questions about when exactly he was infected, how long he's known, when, I mean, because this is not the normal course of treatment to be hospitalized and on oxygen the day after you're, you announce you, you've just been diagnosed, right? None of this adds up. <laughs> Let's just face it, the the official information contradicts whatever appears to be the treatment protocol. Now, either he's got really lousy doctors and they're giving him terrible treatment, which is doubtful. He is the president after all. Or, (coughs) excuse me. Oh, please tell me that's you just need water. Please tell me you just need water. (laughs) Oh, my neighbor is doing construction work and you may be banging. And the dust is unbelievable. (laughs) Okay. All right, good. Get yes. some water. So go. Yeah, all right, so go ahead. The, the joys and pleasures of working from home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. Um, but I mean, let's face it. First of all, it's the British government that really pioneered with the Wellcome Trust the use of dexamethasone. Uh, and the thinking goes like this. You're very, very sick. You've hit uh, the point where you're hospitalized. You're on intensive care unit. You have oxygen supplementation. Your life is in peril. Now we have to dampen your immune response because part of why you're so sick is your immune system overreacting against this strange virus that it's never seen before. And it doesn't know how to best kill this virus, right? Now, note what I said. It's at the end, the most severe point of the disease process. But he's had this mixed in with being given antibodies in order to boost his immune response. Now, that makes no sense at all. Why would you dampen and boost at the same time? Something's really off here. Uh, I think everything seems to point to that Rose Garden event on September 26th as the great moment of contagion for the leadership of the Republican Party and uh, for uh, the president himself. Um, He may have been exposed and infected before then, but we have no evidence of that. Um, certainly that event, what's striking about it is that everybody who has turned up so far publicly as being infected was either on the stage or in the first three rows in the Rose Garden. Yeah. And Melania was seated on the aisle. No one was on her right, but the children of Amy Coney Barrett, the nominee for to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg, were seated beside her. Uh, There's, you know, Amy Coney Barrett has said that she had COVID in August. She said it was a mild case. She tested positive and she was fine. Is it possible that the Barrett family had within it a super spreader child Mm. or a super spreader adult? What did this all come from them? We don't know because the next big gap in information from the White House is contact tracing. You know, this is such a classic textbook case of transmission because everybody was in this tightly packed space together. We know who they were. We know where they were seated. We have tons of photographs. Sorry, Uh That's Commissioner Gordon. You might not have to take that. (laughs) Oh, I'm going to kill it. Uh Oh, (laughs) Um, that is like a 1940s movie telephone. Yeah. Yeah. Why isn't it? Why isn't it? Uh Oh, (laughs) No, no, no. I'm a, I'm a bigger technospaz than you, so I love that moment so much. But go ahead. <laughs> well, that's a phone I never use, so when it rings, it's almost always a junk call. That's <laughs> all of us that don't know technology at some point. Why is it 
Why do I? What's happening? <laughs> go, ahead. Um, go ahead, Lori. Sorry. The point is that they were all seated together in this tight knit little spot, and this is the same person. Uh oh, that's okay. Tell them to screw off. You're on a very important radio television show. In the middle of a radio show. Uh. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I, you, the you, and other doctors ever. that speculated about the doctors that speculated about this that Amy Coney Barrett could be a super, could be the super spreader, led me to make an inappropriate joke about she's Carrie at the Republican prom, which is, you know, that's not scientific, like you would say. But you're saying this is part of the point. We don't know enough about this virus yet to know that yes, she could still be shedding virus after she has quote unquote recovered, or. That would lay lie to something else the president says repeatedly. Kids don't get it and they don't spread it. I mean, this well, is... about half, We know that about half of all transmission of this virus comes from people with no symptoms. And we know that children can be transmitters, though the older you are, the more likely you are. Uh, in other words, the older children, the teenagers, are much more likely to have adult-scale transmission possibilities. Uh, small children, not so much. Um, we know, perhaps to get out of the speculation mode and the possibility of the Barrett family playing a role in this, what we also know is that after that Rose Garden event, they retreated into the White House for private um, meetings, a uh, uh, reception, um, and all of this was in closed circumstances, not outdoors where the possibility of transmission from one person to another was much, much greater. Senator Mike Lee and others, we saw them meeting with Amy Coney Barrett without masks and no social distancing. Um, can I go back, Lori, for a second to the steroid he's on? Because I think it goes to his fitness, as you mentioned, right now in terms of decision making. I mean, you said the steroid Trump's physicians say they administered to the president is typically reserved only for the severely ill coronavirus patients may even pose dangers for people with relatively mild cases. Well. We know they're lying to us. They've had to admit they were lying about what's happening. But it also does, as you implied, impair your judgment, right? This, this, I mean, it, it, talk of the 25th Amendment is, is certainly valid right now, isn't it? I mean, this steroid from everything well, I'm told. We, we yeah. have, he's, on a, he's on a giant experiment. Right. Um, you know, the monoclonal antibodies he was given from Regeneron have, are still in experimental development. We don't know what side effects they may have. Um, the uh, remdesivir is still only an emergency use authorization. It's not a fully licensed drug for COVID treatment. And that means that technically the FDA is still looking at what are its side effects, what are its uh, you know, implications for such things as um, neurological symptoms and cognitive function. Uh, and then uh, we know he has a history of demonstrating some minor incidents as I, I delineated all of the known health incidents of the president in my most recent piece in foreign policy, which I would recommend people take a look at rather than counting on me to correctly verbally list it all at this moment. But we do know that he's had a number of episodes of slurred speech, of um, inability to formulate proper words. Yeah. Uh, he famously was unable on a, uh, at least three occasions to lift a glass of water to his lips while standing at a podium without putting a second hand on yeah. and then from the bottom of the cup yeah. to get the glass properly positioned in his mouth. Um, I personally have had that experience and it was when I had a vertigo response to ear surgery. Mm -hmm. So I know what it feels like and I know that feeling of putting your foot down and not being exactly sure where the ground is. Mm -hmm. And I think we've seen that with him coming off Air Force One stairs and certainly that famous incident at West Point where he was trying to go down the ramp and couldn't seem to feel his feet, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, lots of people have made jokes about all of it, but there's no laughing matter here. If he has an underlying neurological or cardiac problem, that these are all symptoms of, he's certainly at far greater risk now with exposure well, to COVID. I hate to say that, Lori, but you're right. It would explain what appears to be the severity of this, that there, because we know the things we know, 74, he's a man, he's obese. But I mean, as you, as you sort of, we don't really know, we never really got real medical records. And as you say, we never, that unexplained Walter Reed trip that they said was part of his routine physical that did not seem like a you know a routine visit i think you're right we really don't know the underlying comorbidities do we 
No, we don't. And he's gone out of his way for decades to hide the reality of his health. Um, you know, his famous crazy doc in yeah. <laughs> um, New York City who looked like uh, he might be a colleague to Timothy Leary circa 1978 or something, um, was, uh, you know, he claims that the Secret Service came in and seized all 35 years of medical records on yeah. Trump from his office yep. uh, after he had famously allowed the White House to dictate to him the statement that he gave that the president was the, would be the healthiest man ever to serve as president. And he's and 230 then, pounds. Oy. And well, at least. <laughs> yeah. And then the second, um, the second physician who attended um, was uh, active duty military service at the time, as are his current physicians. Right. And keep in mind, that means you're going to tell the commander in chief, your boss, no, sir, I will not say that you're physically fit and healthy and strong like a bull and, you know, a, a picture of physical fitness because that is not true. Well, then, you know, you how many people could say that about their boss? And when the boss is the commander in chief and you are in a military pecking order, these are not independent physicians. Right. Including the current group. Well, you, you went to, on Twitter, Lori, where we are now is that you said at the Rose Garden ceremony, POTUS has been infected, it looks like he got it at the Rose Garden, he's been infected for eight days, typically with COVID-19, the eighth to twelfth day window is the most critical for symptomatic patients. Um, that's when the inflammatory response, all that happens, right? You say, yet as doctors are talking about sending Trump home, um, you said if he's had two oxygen drop incidents and a fever, I mean, this makes no sense. And he might be released today. I mean, none of this makes any sense, does it? Well, I think what's now this is speculation on my part. I don't have firsthand evidence of this. But what it looks like to me is that the president is telling his doctors what he wants to do, not the other way around. Yeah, certainly, certainly no physician with any credibility would have approved he getting into that SUV exposing the Secret Service agents in order to take a drive-by of his cheering crowd and wave at them from the vehicle and then come back into his hospital room. No MD would have said, gee, that's just a swell idea, Mr. Yeah. President. Um, yeah. And so I think what we're seeing is a real tension between uh, what perhaps his medical team thinks is best, even Mark Meadows thinks is best in the White House yeah. and what the president wants and what the president wants is to be campaigning. Yeah. Uh, I understand that he's done more than 14 tweets today. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All caps. All, all caps and all about campaigning and election and getting reelected and he feels swell and so on. And I think that it's if you look at his history, he's put a lot of work into co trying to convince people that he's much younger than he actually is, yeah. that he's uh, extraordinarily vibrant. He's only three years younger than Biden, but he tries to make Biden look like a doddering old fool. And he, you know, this uh, super smart, uh, cognitively 100% brainy, vibrant, robust man. And I think any form of illness defies that image. Yeah and is uh, repugnant to him. And quickly, can I just say, uh, well, first of all, it's insane they have Pence, who's next in line, mm -hmm. flying around, continuing to campaign and debate. But also, you said it's hard to imagine how McConnell can assemble his Senate voting bloc to push through the SCOTUS vote of Amy Coney Barrett. The numbers of COVID-19 infected Republican senators keeps rising. Even if asymptomatic, they should self-isolate for two weeks to protect others. I mean, that that's the medical, they are continuing to ignore the medical facts aren't they well almost nobody connected to this white house outbreak is abiding by the cdc's well posted available for all to see uh self-isolation and quarantine guidelines for those exposed to COVID. none of them should be if you if you've been even exposed whether or not you've tested positive you're supposed to self-isolate yeah. if you know that you've tested positive you're supposed to be in quarantine and that's two weeks um, if, if the Republican leadership decides to finally follow CDC protocols, then they cannot assemble a voting block for the Amy Coney Barrett vote, yeah. probably at least until the last week of October. And that's if no further 
positive cases arise. It's just the more dangerous irresponsibility continues. And you know, because you are a, a Cassandra. <laughs> <laughs> literally been named a Cassandra. She's always right. Um, Lori, I know you're so busy. Thanks so much for taking time this morning. I much appreciate it. Thank you, Stephanie. Okay. Thanks to all your audience. All right. Thank Bye. you, Lori.